Hey guys, it's Miss Martinez. Um, I'm going to now start reading chapter one, part two. I'm having to shorten the videos to upload them to YouTube, so just bear with me. We'll I'll figure this out eventually. Um, so we're leaving off. Um, I'm just going to start reading, so I hope you enjoy. Brian knew now. The pilot was having a heart attack. Brian had been in the shopping mall with his mother when a man in front of Paisley's store had suffered a heart attack. He had gone down and screamed about his chest, an old man, much older than the pilot. Brian knew. The pilot was having a heart attack, and even as the knowledge came to Brian, he saw the pilot slam into the seat one more time. One more awful time, he slammed back into the seat, and his right leg jerked, pulling the plane to the side in a sudden twist, and his head fell forward, and spit came. Spit came from the corners of his mouth, and his legs contracted up, up into his seat, and his eyes rolled back in his head until there was only white. Only white for his eyes, and the smell became worse, filled the cockpit, and all of it so fast, so incredibly fast that Brian's mind could not take it in at first, could only see it in stages. The pilot had been talking, just a moment ago, complaining of the pain. He had been talking. Then the jolts had come. The jolts that took the pilot back had come, and now Brian sat, and there was a strange feeling of silence in the thrumming roar of the engine, a strange feeling of silence and being alone. Brian was stopped. He was stopped. Inside, he was stopped. He could not think past what he saw, what he felt. All was stopped. The very core of him, the very center of Brian Robeson, was stopped and stricken with a white, flash of horror, a terror so intense that his breathing, his thinking, and nearly his heart had stopped. Stopped. Seconds passed, seconds that became all of his life, and he began to know what he was seeing, began to understand what he saw, and that was worse. So much worse that he wanted to make his mind freeze again. He was sitting in a bush playing, roaring seven thousand feet above the northern wilderness with a pilot who had suffered a massive heart attack and who was either dead or in something close to a coma. He was alone. In the roaring plane with no pilot, he was alone. Alone. All right, guys, that's a short video um, for today. Uh, remember, this is chapter one, part two. I'll be coming again um, with chapter two for you. So I hope you enjoy with a cup of hot chocolate or whatever the case may be. Enjoy and I'll see you soon.